of students, this is non-flowering plants. And today we're going to talk about the life cycle of uh, Marchantia, which is uh, what we're going to use as our example of a complex thallus liverwort. Now these diagrams, I might say, were given to me by Dennis Walker, who I took the class from, and now I'm giving them to you, so it's like this heritage thing. Let's take the overview first. Uh, on the top half, we have the haploid stages of the life cycle. That is one set of chromosomes. And then at fertilization, what happens is eggs get together with sperm. And an egg is haploid, and a sperm is haploid. So haploid plus haploid makes diploid. And then in the bottom half of the diagram, we have the diploid stages of the life cycle, the sporophytes. What happens then? is the sporophyte makes spores, and the spores are made by meiosis. So they go from being diploid to being haploid. The spores are the dispersal stage of the organism. This is the stage that goes out and claims new ground and expands the population. So it's a very important thing. Now let's go into more detail. So here in red, we have the egg and the sperm egg and the sperm there. And see that sperm's really trying hard to get to that egg. And then at fertilization, they come together and they make a zygote with a Z, sort of like a zebra. The zygote then undergoes some mitotic divisions and it makes an embryo. And the embryo is the intermediate stage of this growing sporophyte. Like it hasn't gotten yet to the point where it's going to make spores but it's growing in that way. So then the next stage, we eventually get a sporophyte, and here's the capsule of the sporophyte, and inside of it, it has the sporocytes. Uh, there's also a seda, which is the stalk of the capsule, and a foot, and it acts like a placenta. Okay, so we have sporocytes there, and then they undergo meiosis. So each sporocyte, it has two sets of chromosomes, and then it will make four spores, each of which have one set of chromosomes. And the spores start out as tetrads, the four sister spores are all together, and then they break apart, and that's what disperses. Part of the way that they disperse is they get uh, thrown out of the capsule by these little springs, and the springs are called elaters. They go boing, 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 and throw the spores out. Now, the spores can be either male spores or female spores, and we can't tell the difference just by looking at them. They disperse, and they grow up to be either male gametophytes or female gametophytes. And all the cells of this gametophyte, barring a mutation, are all genetically identical to one another. Now, in Marchantia, we have another structure that's called the Gemma cup, and it is a cup that contains... Jimmy. Jimmy are these asexual propagules. They're multicellular and photosynthetic. They don't live as long as spores, and they're much larger than spores, and they also can disperse and claim new ground and make new gametophytes. Those new gametophytes would be genetically identical to the gametophyte that that Gemma came from. When these things are ready to reproduce sexually, then they grow up these little umbrellas, and the umbrellas on the male gametophytes are called antheridiophores. And the umbrellas on the female gametophytes are called archegoniophores. The archegoniophores are kind of fringed more than the antheridiophores. On the top of the antheridiophore, you'll see little pits, and that's where the antheridia grow. They're little sacs of sperm. And then on the underside of an archegoniophore, there are little flasks that are the archegonia. There's a close-up of an archegonium. You can see it has a venter. That's the part that holds the egg. And then there's a neck, which consists of neck cells and canal cells. Eventually, the canal cells will just sort of dissolve into goo, uh, and that attracts the sperm down through the neck. The antheridium consists of jacket cells, and then inside of the jacket, cells are produced the sperm. When they're all mature and just right, and there's just the right amount of water outside, then the jacket will contract and squeeze and burst open, and they'll squirt the sperm out. Uh, included along with the sperm is a kind of uh, soapy substance that uh, allows 
them to break the water tension a little bit. And I guess the sperm just then wriggle around in all directions. If one is really lucky, then it will swim up an archegoniophore, and it'll get within smelling distance of an archegonium, and then it'll swim uh, through the canal and fertilize an egg. And that's a super lucky sperm. OK, let's go back to the overview. So the top half of the diagram are the gametophytic stages of the life cycle. And then they result in making gametes, eggs and sperm. The bottom half of the diagram is the sporophytic stages of the life cycle, which results in making spores. And the spores are haploid, and then they disperse. And that is really all that I had to say about that.